and welcome to You Talking to Me. Brussels is ready to give France more time to get its budget deficit reduced and decided not to sanction the country. Does France get a special treatment here? That's our topic today and we are going to discuss it with the following guests. I'm very happy to welcome in our studio Mrs. Virginie Rosière. She's a French member of the European Parliament from the Socialists and Democrats. Bonjour. Bonjour. And Mr. Michael Theurer, he's a German liberal, also a member of the European Parliament. Welcome. Hello, thank you very much. We are joined by Artyom Skonov from Latvian Radio, your Net Plus partner. Hello. Hello. And on the phone we have Stavros Samoulidis from Sky Media, uh, also a partner of your Net Plus. Hi to Athens. Hi, Stavros. Hi, Daniela. Hi to your guests. We are coming, uh, coming back to you later, uh, Stavros. Uh, Mrs. Rosier, France will get two more years to, get, to reach uh, the 3% um, limit uh, for its deficit. Um, last week we had the impression that the Commission had some difficulties to explain why. Was this a political decision? Oh, I think it's a rational decision. We can see that austerity measures and austerity policies in Europe, doesn't, they don't work. So now it's time to uh, consider it rationally and decide to change for something which works better. So should we just forget about the rules? No, it's not about, you know, rules, they are there to fix guidelines. But uh, we, we have tried to stick by the rules for five years now. And we know the economic situation of the Eurozone. And I don't think we can say it's a success. So now it's time to reconsider. And, you know, ap applying rules uh, stubbornly is not the right way to have a, a, a real economic policy in the Eurozone. Um, Mr. Tora, you are fighting for the respect of strict rules. Um, according to you, should France have been sanctioned here? The major question is, uh, we had a discussion some years ago that states are not able to uh, go bankrupt or to be insolvent. Now we have seen that is possible and that is a major problem and therefore we have to get out of the sovereign debt crisis and uh, what we do not believe is that unemployment can be overcome by higher debt crisis and by higher sovereign debts. So you cannot fight a sovereign debt crisis with increasing sovereign debt and therefore we have to find another way out and uh, that is uh, to uh, strengthen the real economy and especially to ease uh, the framework for small and medium-sized enterprises. But back to France. Uh, should the Commission you know, decide to sanction a country like this that's not following the rule? The, the major question is if we have rules, uh, everybody should apply to that and, and therefore France had uh, quite a bit of time and uh, it was good that uh, the Commission uh, now g gave a clear word from our position as Liberal and Democrats. We would have wished an even clearer position from the Commission because other countries like Ireland or Portugal uh, or also the Baltic states like Latvia and Lithuania, they really have undergone a, a, a reform process and they have uh, complied with the rules. Okay, um, French uh, finance minister Emmanuel Macron um, was in this studio this week um, in a debate organized by BFM Business. It's a Euronet Plus partner. And he claimed not to be stricter on rules. Uh, he said that France was doing more than any other country in terms of budget efforts. Let's see. Nous avons tous une responsabilité. La responsabilité de la France, c'est de tenir ses engagements budgétaires jusqu'au bout. Oui. Nous le faisons. C'est de faire les réformes pour elle-même et vis-à-vis -vis de ses partenaires. Oui, Nous le faisons. Oui. Mais l'Europe a une responsabilité qui est de ne pas nourrir les populismes. Oui. Et à chaque fois qu'on qu va dans le sens qui consiste à dire « vous n'allez pas assez loin », d'avoir en quelque sorte une approche qui ne serait que par le chiffre, sans regarder d'où on vient, sans regarder la dynamique, sans regarder l'ennemi de la croissance européenne, eh bien, on fait le jeu des populistes. So, Mr. Tora, um, are you feeding populism by criticizing uh, the Commission for not applying the strict rules? Uh, the real source of populism is that uh, people are unemployed and in, in a bad uh, situation. And uh, Monsieur Macron, I, I really would like to express my compliments because he was fighting for the structural reforms we, we would have liked to see in France uh, much earlier. So perhaps we, we have to blame other people. But uh, if you look at it, the majority in the Assemblée Nationale was not there and they really used the constitutional uh, way out of it. I can only encourage uh, Monsieur Macron and the 
whole French government to go further on and to speed up uh, with its structural reforms because we have to overcome the real economic problems. That means uh, we need a better environment for businesses that they can employ people. Uh, these uh, measures were controversial in France. Should Monsieur Macron go further? Well, there is a real question of timing, of course. Uh, even if you well, uh, consider the structural reforms to be done, um, you can see this has to be done when growth is there, and growth is not there right now. So there is a responsibility now in Europe to relaunch growth. So it, it means that you are not uh, completely strict on deficit, because you cannot at the same time relaunch growth, reduce your deficits, and make stru structural reforms. You have to find one of the uh, levers you have to, to lose if you want the others to be effective. Mm -hmm. So I think now it's, well, Europe is moving in the right direction with um, considering flexibility in the last communication, which we can see for France, also considering public investment to relaunch growth, and also uh, trying to uh, move Eurozone out of deflation, and thanks to the ECB recent uh, announcements. So I think there are um, many, uh, many levers moving in the right direction. So yeah, I'm pretty optimistic. Right now in the Commission we have uh, different positions. We have those who are the hardliners, let's say, uh, like uh, commissioners like uh, Valdis Dombrovskis, uh, Jirki Katainen, and we have Pia Moscovici who is more in favor of flexible rules. So, uh, Artyoms, the plan that uh, these, let's say, two hardliners would uh, keep Moscovici in check did not work out. Somehow. Well, Commissioner Muscovici, of course, is trying to make sure that he doesn't have any bosses, you know, that's uh, part of what he's really trying to do, that he is deciding. And you see, the, I, from what I hear is that the cooperation they're having is quite good up until the moment that it comes to France. It's France that they cannot agree on. And it's clear that it's been a very hard lobbying from the side of the French government to make sure that the Commission does not go further, does not uh, propose any sanction, doesn't say any strict uh, words. And we can only wonder why is this happening? Why is that there was this only issue that they could not agree? Because uh, from the unofficial sources, it is clear that Valdis Domrovskis would have liked to have a stronger position on France, and he does not agree with this position. Well, you know, it has been decided. Uh, so now, uh, my question to the guests here would be, why do you think there is a such a uh, such desire from the Commission, especially from the head of the Commission, uh, President Juncker, uh, to go forward to France? Is it a pure uh, understanding of, of the necessity to have a flexibility or are there some political reasoning behind that? Some just the pure need to keep his grand coalition together working? So. Well, uh, first, I would like to, to, to say that that's not exactly true. There's not only <coughs> France uh, concerned by uh, sanctions from the Commission. Italy and Belgium are also concerned, and uh, there won't, won't be sanctions for them either. So it's let's not only focus on France, because it, that's not uh, exactly what the situation is. But the third distinction in a row yeah, is kind of a laughable, the, you know? But I think what, why Juncker is considering flexibility, it's simply because our austerity doesn't work. And now we have paid all around Europe, and other countries have paid a harder price even, and we can see it doesn't work, so it's time to move on and try to have a real economic policy, and not only applying rules with no thinking of the consequences. I don't agree, if I, I may interrupt there. I, I think that uh, the reform plans really worked out. Now, we, if we look to Ireland, for instance, that is a country with the highest growth rate in the whole European Union, also in Portugal, also in Spain, and uh, we, I've managed, mentioned Latvia, and it, it, it was really beatening uh, the population there who took a lot of sacrifices uh, with fiscal discipline and consolidation of budgets. Uh, if we tell them, you had to do that and now we see they are on a growth path again and others they get an exception i cannot uh, i cannot agree with that yeah, mm -hmm. you can, can you say uh, economic situation is good when you've got half of the population was unemployed no, like like in greece like in spain you know in portugal unemployment is very high now as well so of course it's getting better but it has been so so bad no, that it can only get better and the question I is isn't to retaliate that. and to say okay we've suffered so we want you to suffer as well mm. you know um 
That is you, a, you were under the system. About reforms. No, that's a, a no, that's a wrong that, that's a wrong question. I don't want to be accused for the unemployment in these countries because I think that uh, the public debts is one reason for that unemployment. I don't believe in a globalized world that you can uh, protect the European Union from globalization and that you can by 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 publicly funded uh, programs overcome the recession or the uh, unemployment. You have to have uh, enterprises uh, and products uh, which are developed uh, in in enterprises and which can be sold uh, on the world market and the question is how to get uh, economies in whole Europe competitive that's mm -hmm. a good question but okay. that's, that's not only one lever there are many and if you try to move all levers in the same direction, then you, you kill growth and you've got the, this result. Okay, um, your party fellow was uh, comparing the, the behavior of the commission towards France with um, the way Greece was treated. And let's uh, look uh, to Greece, uh, Stavros. Um, did the people also see a double standard approach here? Yes, of course, as you can imagine, there are voices in Greece, uh, Daniela, that uh, say that the Commission is applying here double standards, um, especially inside the new Greek government, uh, Syriza and the most radical wing of this uh, party. Um, however, there has been no official reaction by the Prime Minister's office um, for this two years extension given to France, as they do realize uh, that there are Uh, these two extra years are not given for free. They, they are accompanied by austerity measures with uh, revisiting of the budget for 2015 and an additional four billions worth of savings for France. So there are some measures there. They, they see that this is not given for free. What concerns mostly Greece now, uh, though, is that therefore, uh, and therefore my question to Mrs. Virginie Rosier, um, will this development for France Uh, in any way um, be, um, mean something for, for the stance that France is applying towards Greece, because for the moment we've seen a quite passive stance uh, from the French government regarding the Greek debt issue. Well, uh, you know, it's not only France. Uh, I think the the head of states and governments. Uh, well, my my opinion is that they've been pretty harsh with Greece. We uh, uh, the socialist and French delegation so supported uh, Greece uh, in its um, demand for. Uh, some kind of flex flexibility regarding its debt. So, so did the French government not not uh, do enough? Well, this is this is a complicated issue. Governments governments have to negotiate. But I think what we lack in, in the euro is a real economic policy, with a real eco economic democracy expressing here. It's only in, in the end of uh, states and governments which have to, in some way, bargain. So I think, and it's one thing we're working on on the parliament to have a more democratic. Um, management of the Eurozone with uh, involvement of the parliamentarists to have this common interest of the Eurozone being uh, represented by uh, uh, MEPs. Uh, we're almost at the end. I'd like to introduce a question from our Facebook page. Uh, Lenka asks, as Slovaks, we pay for the Greeks and the French who were richer than us. Where is the European solidarity, M Michael Teurer? Yeah, that is the question. Um, if if I uh, get the information out of the Eurogroup that the Greek finance minister Varoufakis uh, answers uh, the Latvian finance minister who points out that the minimum wage in Greek is higher than the average wage in, in, in Latvia and then he answers, yeah, that might be right, but Greece is a rich country, then I cannot uh, accept that uh, because it is indeed like that, that uh, other countries like Latvia or Estonia or Slovak Republic, the citizens there are much poor, but they pay their solidarity and therefore I think it's important that we keep to the rules. We cannot overcome the sovereign debt crisis with higher debts. Yeah, Virginie Rosier, last okay, word. Let's stick to the rules, but just to put things in perspective, the difference uh, between uh, the 3% and 4% and some percent, which is a deficit, it's half of the uh, fiscal fraud we experience in France. So maybe if you want public debt to be sustainable, then uh, moving for to avoid the tax evasion could be an idea. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Rosier. Thank you, Michael Teurer. Thank you, Artyoms. Thank you, Stavros. And thank you all. And see you soon. And you talking to me. Mm -hmm.